Uh, hi. PTSD. Most cruel illness in the world. Sorry, I look a mess. I'm having a really, really bad day. Nightmares, flashbacks, feelings of self hate. I suppose my story began when I was six. Everything was okay until then. I had a normal family mum, dad, sister. We moved into a brand new house when I was two and it was a good, really good place to be. Mum and dad argued a lot but to me that was normal. And then on my sixth birthday, mum Dad said, my mum was working late, I was a mummy's girl, six years in between my sister and me, um, my mum had two stillborns in between, so when she had me I was special to her I suppose. <sighs> so on my sixth birthday, I didn't see my mum. She was working late. <coughs> there wasn't a day before that that I hadn't seen my mum. On the 13th of October, my dad kept saying, she's working late, she's working late. Then on the 13th of October, my dad answered the door and there was a policeman there. We were sent in the front room, me and my sister. Not thinking anything was wrong. I was a child. Anyway, my dad spoke to uh, my grandma. My grandma lived with us. That was my mum's mum. And they spoke to this policeman in the... Um, kitchen and then, oh I don't even know how long it was after, said, my dad said, the policeman wants to talk to you. Oh, don't get me wrong, I love my dad, but he buried his head. He couldn't say anything, he couldn't tell us. The police had to tell us that my mum had killed herself. And life changed from then. My mum and dad was older parents. My mum was 41 when she died. My dad was 50, something like that. He didn't know how to look after two girls. And he worked nights. He was an engineer. So we went to my grand's for a while at nights. That was okay. It weren't bad. She was okay. She wasn't my real gran. We just called her gran because she was older. She was a friend of the family. So while my dad worked nights, we went there. That was all good. Then when I was 12, no, actually before that, we stopped going to Grand's because when my sister turned 16, I was 10, my dad decided she could look after me. At home, that weren't too bad. She was to send me out saying it was to 
jumbo sails and to clip jumbo and that lot from neighbours. I suppose my dad didn't know how to dress us, really. Um, my sister wanted us to have clothes. I don't know if you've realised, but I can't really look him in the face because it's hard for me. It's hard for me to look anybody in the face. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah, I'm having a glass of wine tonight. Just a one mind. I want too much medication to have more. Yeah, so my sister got married when I was 12. She was 18. And I was sent at night then to stay with another family friend, a friend of my mum's. She was called Frida. My dad paid her every Monday night to give me breakfast and to stay there Monday to Friday at nights. I was dropped off at seven o'clock when my dad went to work and I stayed there, went to school the next morning and then went home for tea and my dad had dropped me off again the next night. But what he didn't know was as soon as my dad went after dropping me off, no matter what the weather, I was pushed out of the door. I was pushed out of the door and I wasn't allowed back in till half nine, ten o'clock. And then I was sent straight to bed. I would sit on a doorstep in the rain, in the freezing cold. I lived in Yorkshire. It's very cold there, you get a lot of snow. And I wasn't allowed in at all, no warmth. Then when I was allowed in, I was sent straight to bed. I didn't have a blanket. I didn't have a sheet. The whole house smelled horrible. And I was freezing. I would lie on that mattress, a dirty mattress. With my coat on, my school uniform on for the next day. Just trying to get warm and the nights. I laid there just shivering, not even going to sleep. So cold. She had family come down and stay, and I remember this one time. This she had family coming to stay, and I was put on a blanket under the stairs because the family needed bed that I was to go used to go in so I had a blanket it was put under the stairs and I slept with the dog that dog was lovely followed me sat with me outside while I did my homework in the rain the cold the wind anyway this one time they had family down and her niece, a bit younger than me, she had a bowl of cereal and Feed came out and said, who's had this bowl? The girl didn't say anything and I didn't say anything because I hadn't had none. I weren't allowed to eat there and I didn't eat there. 
so um, she looked at me and said, it's you in it. I said, no. She picked up the ball and threw it at my head. It smashed and I had, I was bleeding all down my face. Still got a scar somewhere in my hairline. And um, it was quite a deep cut. She kept me off school the next day. She didn't want anybody to see. And um, she pulled my dad up and said that I wasn't well. So it was best that she look after me during the day. <coughs> and not to worry about me. And my dad was grateful to her. She used to call me a bastard. I was always the little bastard. Nothing else. Just the little bastard. She used to backhand me for no reason at all. But I always wanted to please her. I don't know why. I think I thought first a mother figure. I withdrew into myself. I had no friends at school. Because I smell of the house. So I was bullied. The house stunk. I really smell. Anyway. Right. After a while, I begged my dad to let me stay at home by myself because I couldn't stand the emotional, physical and mental abuse of this woman. And he said, no, I was too young, too young to stay at the house on my own. So although it was a bit of a journey, he said, go to your sisters, stay at your sisters. So I did. It was two buses to school, two buses back. So I didn't see my dad during the week. It was straight from school to my sister's or my sister's to school. But she never made me go to school. It was always easier for her to, for her to stay in bed and look at me, look after her kids. But God, I love them kids. They were like my own. She went in to have a third baby, and as usual, I wasn't at school. She thought it'd be easier to keep me off and help her husband look after the kids. So I was looking after the kids, and... Um, One night, she'd had the baby by then. One night, he caught me into his bedroom and I thought he wanted me to get a coffee or something. And he asked me to sit on the bed, he wanted to talk to me. So I sat on the bed and waited for him to talk to me. And suddenly his hands were under my clothes. And I was fighting and fighting that I could smell. <coughs> I could smell the grease off his hair. I could smell his dirtiness and his, he had filthy fingernails. He touched me everywhere into my clothes. He tried to, tried to drag me into his bed. And I fought him. I was only a child. I was around 13 and a half. And um, I got away and he lived in a cul-de-sac and there was somebody. Friends of theirs upstairs and I ran upstairs. And I was hysterical. I was totally hysterical. And I told the neighbours what he had done. I 
And um, the neighbour wanted to go down and kill him. All I could think about was my sister. And I said, no, because my sister would find out. And so anyway, I stayed up there till my sister came home. I don't even, can't even remember the reason I give her for my being there. And then my sister started having an affair after that. And she wasn't happy with her husband. And so I thought it was a good time to tell her what he'd done to me. And um, she was happy that I told her. I think she was even happy that he'd done it because it gave her a reason to leave him. So she left him. She left him because of what he'd done to me, but it was an excuse really because she wanted to be with this other man. My sister after that went a bit wild. It was one man to another. She could miss him for days on end while I looked after her children. And I didn't know where she was. And then one day she came back after being away for three days. And I was angry because one of the children was really poorly. She got a really bad cough and cold. And I was still only young myself. And um, I was pregnant. I was 15. And I was five and a half months pregnant. Nobody told me about sex. And I didn't go to school, so it was my first time and I got pregnant. So um, I went mad with my sister, hormones and all that, the fact that I, did, I was pregnant and I'd had to look after her child and she'd come missing. There was no food in the house. I didn't know what to do. So me and her had an argument. I went up to the bedroom that I was staying in. Just stayed there for a bit. Calmed down. Went to go to the bathroom. She'd locked me in. So I banged on the door and said I wanted to go to the bathroom. And she said, you're not coming out. You're not coming out to apologise. I didn't have nothing to apologise for. But after a couple of hours, I really needed to go to the bathroom. So I shouted down and said, I'm sorry. And she said, basically, too, li too little, too late. She kept me in that bath, in that bedroom, sorry, for five days. No food, no water, no bathroom facilities. There was a cup in the bedroom. I used to have to pee in there and then empty the cup out the window. I'd bang on the door and beggar to let me out and the door was a big fire door so I could no way have got out of it myself after five days I was so desperate I was getting thin I could feel myself getting thin I was thin I was dizzy and I opened the window and I thought I wonder if I could lower myself down so I tried and I fell straight on my tummy. I went to the nearest phone box, called an ambulance. I could feel myself bleeding. I could I I thought as my water's gone, but I knew I was bleeding. Ambulance picked me up away from her house because I was scared that she'd take me back and lock me back in. Ambulance picked me up, took me to rush me to the hospital. Nineteen hours later, I gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. 
he lived three and a half hours. They knew when he was born that he wasn't going to live. He was tiny, absolutely tiny. But perfect. It was perfect. The dim delights. And they just left me alone. With him in my arms. I called him Simon. After three and a half hours, he just. He went. That was the hardest thing in the world. I got on with my life. I eventually met my husband, had three more beautiful children. But I used to break down, I used to have nightmares, insomnia. I never knew exactly what was wrong with me. I also used I used to pull my hair out, I used to twist my hair and pull it out. If there was ever anything where there was arguments or anything, I just sat on the floor and scream. I couldn't deal with it. I also witnessed a kidnapping. The guy with tears it and I witnessed it. I from the police. I thought it was dead. When it was tasered, his shoe flew off and he went back and he smacked his head off the concrete. I'll never forget that noise. It's horrible. So much more gone on in my life. It's seven miscarriages. Every baby I lost, I lost a little bit more of my heart. I still dream now that <coughs> I'm having the miscarriages. I still dream about my sister's ex-husband touching me. And every time I dream about it or I get a flashback, it's like it happens all over again. I can actually feel his hands on me. It's the worst feeling in the world. Sometimes I hear a baby cry or I look at a newborn baby and I see my Simon. He's beautiful, beautiful black hair with a tiny little curl coming up out of his hair those little curls not quite developed He said he was still born even though he lived three and a half hours. That was back in the day, <laughs> a long time ago. Would have been 35 now. And so he was buried in a mass grave, a stillborn grave. We weren't allowed to hold a service or anything. Anyway, fast forward, a few years ago, I really don't know what caused it, but I sent a text to my daughters, I don't remember doing it, and it said something along the lines of, I've got to go to work in the morning, I can't believe that you've stayed out clubbing all night. Your brother needs to be go to school. I'm waiting up for you. I'm really cross. They phoned me 
and said, Mum, we don't even live at home anymore. We've got children of his own. Luke, that's my son. Luke's an adult. He works in London on site. What is going on? I didn't understand what they were saying. I just shouted at him. Next thing I know, doctors here, my children are here, and I'm, I got taken into hospital, I was in hospital for two weeks, I was seen by psychologists, every mental health worker that you can imagine, and said I disassociated, I had quite a few sessions of therapy after that. And I said, I got a lot out of me, a lot came out that I hadn't remembered, that I pushed to the back of my mind and I hadn't remembered at all. Things kept going like this, I kept disassociating. I'd have more therapy and eventually it's got worse and worse to the point that I'm jumpy. I jerk and jump for no reason at all. I cry for no reason. I go to sleep and I have nightmares, such vivid nightmares that it's happening all over again. Everything that I have gone through is happening all over again. I see the policeman telling me my mum's died. I see my sister's ex-husband. I feel him, I smell him. I feel my baby in my arms. I cry so badly. I see the guy that was kidnapped. I see the taser. I see his trainer fly off into the road. And I can see it so vividly. And it's happening all over again. And then a few days later, I've forgotten about it. And then something happens or something is said. And... I relive it. I'm going through it again and again and again. I was finally diagnosed with CPTSD. And um, I'm on. They put me on these. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, hold on, hold on, something completely different, these, metazapine, they stop the nightmares, but they don't stop the flashbacks, so now I'm having intense therapy, <laughs> I'm under loads of different people, mind, psychologist, um, oh, one step or something. I just want to get better. I want to stop living in the past. I just want to be normal. I want my broken brain to be mended again. I don't know if it ever will. But I'm going to try. With a lot of help. Thank you for listening to my story.